Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And uh, today I'm talking about the new album from Plaid, Fjorm Felorks. <laughs> Alright, it's time once again to talk about the legendary IDM duo of Ed Handley and Andy Turner, aka Plaid. Uh, this is my third time doing a video on them, having, cover having covered their last two albums, uh, The Digging Remedy and Polymer, upon their release. Plaid may not be among the most innovative of IDM outfits, they kind of nailed their sound and style down in the late 90s with albums like Not For Threes and pretty much just stuck to that style for the rest of their existence. But that style has always been super unique and versatile and the kind of which you can't get anything quite like elsewhere, mixing lots of bright and heartfelt melodies with lots of odd and cerebral structures. Switching off between studied electronic compositions to more electroacoustic work that has more varied instrumentation, usually care of guest musician Bennett Walsh. You can expect pretty much the exact same general blends of sounds for each new album of theirs, but they always execute those sounds differently enough with each album and end up with different enough strengths and weaknesses each time for all their albums to set themselves apart from each other. And there's always enough variety within those sounds for them to continually drop lots of front-to-back fascinating listening experiences with lots of interesting details. Almost never the kind of material that will hit immediately, but will nearly always be major slow burn growers as you keep familiarizing yourself with their various oddities. They've put out lots of albums I've loved over the years. I've obviously highlighted the original trilogy of their early albums, Not For Threes, Rest Proof Clockwork, and Double Figure as their strongest and most iconic work, but they've put out plenty of solid material since then. Uh, the Digging Remedy eventually grew on me to the level of those three classics over the years. Still think it's fantastic and marked it as one of my favorite albums of 2016 overall. And their last album, Polymer, still holds up as one of their better ones too, for all the reasons I highlighted in my video. They do have a couple of less interesting entries in their catalog, such as Spokes or Reachy Prints, the latter of which I did really like upon its release, but has markedly shrunk on me over the years. But even these albums are decent at the very worst, and have plenty to like in their own right. I'll always look forward to a new project of theirs whenever it's announced. Plaid continue to do their Plaid thing, and it'll always be interesting to see how they execute it each time. Got a new concept with this one based around some weird science fiction story of the duo traveling to another planet with an entire graphic novel as a tie-in, which I've not seen or read anything of, but I've seen their promo of at least. Getting a lot of like AI generated vibes off of it, but it does look cool. I was just as intrigued by the prospect of this album as any other Plaid album. Though something did admittedly hit different about this album that I wasn't used to out of Plaid. Usually Plaid albums take a lot of time for me to wrap my head around due to how many strange and unconventional structures and ideas they usually explore. But I didn't actually have any trouble wrapping my head around Fjorm Florks. I felt like I had an opinion on it relatively nailed down after one listen. And that first impression was... I mean, this was nice, but it also kind of a letdown. I've still been sitting with it for a while anyway, since Plaid albums are always growers. I've probably heard it like seven times by this point, and it's also marginally grown on me over time. Though I was struck right off the bat how, despite its alien-themed concept and marketing, the actual music in this album feels markedly more straightforward than the usual fare from them, with much less of their denser headiness. I didn't feel like I was getting nearly as much of the usual unconventional weirdness I expect out of them, and it really only feels alien insofar as all Plaid albums feel kind of alien in some way. On first listen, I could have even called it watered down by their standards. Now granted, I'm not actually going to call it that. The album's straightforwardness and comparative ease of digestion isn't always necessarily a weakness, and sometimes that leads to a handful of really immediately striking cuts that have continued to stick with me with repeat listens. I'd still say the album is generally good, and I do unequivocally enjoy it more than Reiki Prince. Despite that album feeling denser than this one, it also doesn't have high points as high and runs together a lot more than this one did. But this album was noticeably weaker and more uneven than the two albums they'd released in between, and I'd struggle to say that it really stands among the best they can do as a complete whole, or even really plays to their usual strengths as well as it could've. I'll start with the positives. There were three tracks on this album that always stuck out to me as major highlights and only got better and better with each successive time I heard them. The opener, Perspex, is absolutely gorgeous, 
mixing all these glittering layers of pianos and guitar plucks and other keyboards over deep and warm bass lines. It feels like it's picking up from where Polymer left off with its closing track, uh, Praise, and feels even more spirit lifting as it further builds upwards over time. Fantastic way for the album to start out. As usual, the Bennett Walsh collab is a winner. He appears under his Mason B alias on the track Nightcrawler, and they come together to deliver the single most propulsive cut in the bunch, uh, that ha even has a slight bit of like an 80s new wave flavor to it, in the way the electronic percussion and clean electric guitars come together. And it's all just so breezy and exciting and blood pumping, it never fails to grab my attention the second it comes on. But the best track here for me unquestionably has to be Wonder Gun. Uh, the way it hits you with these punchy horn sections in the beginning and then hit you with this absolutely sick disco groove with super nice grooving bass lines and plinky melodies that keep building up and get more and more epic as you go along with the horns joining back in later on. Even if it gets the tiniest bit repetitive, this is the track that feels like it best nailed that quirky intergalactic adventure concept they promoted the album with, and I freaking loved it. It almost made the entire album worth it all on its own. <laughs> Perhaps, unfortunately, nothing else on the album quite reached the heights of these three cuts, but there are plenty of other good ones, too. Modenet was a nice, warm, and friendly little instrumental synth pop cut with all these bubbling synth melodies rushing over each other and going over a shuffling and foot-tapping beat. It does feel like it could soundtrack the experience of making first contact with an alien race that turn out to be totally chill and we get along with them great. <laughs> CA starts out with all these clanking and off-kilter mechanical beats but builds up lots of cool, dramatic, and airy synth chords on top. Bull has a fairly straightforward marching beat and thick bass line but all these neat uh, steel drum-ish melodic tones that play some mildly unsettling but still alluring chords. And uh, Quitcher. <laughs> Uh, has lots of nice dramatic and melodic arpeggios that might even have a tiny bit of, like, classical influence going into them, and layering over one of the more chill beat patterns. But as much as I enjoy each of these tracks while they're on, their impact feels oddly fleeting, and I forget pretty much everything about them once the next track rolls around. Even some of them can occasionally remind me of earlier moments in the Plaid catalog that did a similar idea better, like how the whole build-up and progression of CA kinda reminds me of what they did with the track Maru from Polymer, and not sticking the landing in as memorable a way. I do also unfortunately have to say the album has an especially weak final stretch, and uh, saves my three least favorite tracks for the end. Uh, Return to Return is an okay mix of glittering, lighthearted guitar or dulcimer-like sounds, but feels like a less effective or emotionally resonant companion to what they did with the album's opener. Thomasen has a really uh, straightforward mix of percussion and trans synth plucks that play some slightly unpleasant chords and get clogged up with all these warped vocal effects. It, it just kind of feels like a bit of an unsightly mess. And the closer, Wide Eyes, while not as messy as the track it follows, is a bit of an anticlimactic finish to this thing with all these fairly plain mixes of ascending arpeggios going over some thicker bass stabs and shuffling percussion. I suppose it's propulsive enough, and I'd considered marking it as a highlight on first listen, but with each passing listen, it feels more and more like a, an arbitrary note for this album to go out on, and just doesn't hit me on the level that even some of the weaker moments in the first half can. And that's everything on Fjorm Falorx. Uh, the album is also really short at under 40 minutes and had me feeling somewhat unsatisfied at the end and thinking, wait, that's it? And uh, that just kind of leaves me kind of conflicted on the project as a whole. In one breath, I can see this doing just as well for the usual fans as any other Plaid album. Even if I don't feel like these mixes are quite as well detailed or complex as what they usually deliver, I don't feel like they sacrifice any of the sound or even the heart behind what makes Plaid tick. The straightforward simplicity of this album is not always a bad thing, and there are more tracks here that I like than tracks I don't. But it's still the kind of project that leaves me feeling like it's not quite up to snuff with their actual best work. It's good and works on the baseline level that all Plaid albums do, and I might still hang on to like just those best moments. But they've delivered a lot of other stuff that's resonated with me a lot more, been more consistent, and given me so much more to chew on. Again, not bad at all. It's still worth hearing for all the usual Plaid fans, but I couldn't get over that feeling that this was a little undercooked by their standards. And in the grander scheme of their catalog, while not their worst, is probably one of my least favorites from them in a while, and I'm gonna have to give this a 6.7 out of 10.
But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters. There are some people. You want to add yourself to that list? The link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.